Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about power shifting, no lift shifting, flat foot shifting, whatever you would like to call it. How to properly execute a no lift shift, meaning that from the manufacturer it actually came equipped with no lift shifting or a tuner provided it. And also how you can actually make a car quicker in a straight line using flat foot shifting uh, if the engine is turbocharged. So it's pretty clever technology. I'm not sure actually what the first vehicle was to come equipped from the factory with no lift shift. However, around 2007 with the Chevy Cobalt SS, that actually came from the factory with no lift shifting. And recently I was able to try out the Cadillac CT4 V Blackwing, which also is equipped with no lift shifting. Now, it sounds very simple, right? All you're doing is you're shifting gears without lifting your foot off the accelerator. How complicated could it possibly be? But looking into what's actually going on with the engine, it's actually a pretty clever, pretty interesting process, and it's not nearly as simple as just shifting while leaving your foot down. So let's start off with the basics and talk about how this is done in the CT4 V Blackwing. So we start with the engine, a 3.6 liter twin turbocharged V6. So we're just looking at half of the cylinders right here. So those cylinders are feeding a twin disc clutch. So you can see the two discs in the clutch there. That clutch then feeding the transmission. Of course, you've got your manual shifter to select this collar between our two gears for this example, first and second, and then sending that power to the rear wheels. So the standard process of shifting in a manual transmission, you're probably well aware of. You've got your foot on the gas, you release your foot off of that gas, you press in the clutch, you shift gears, you let the clutch out, and you get back on the gas. Now a no lift shift, you are simply doing all of these steps except not taking your foot off the gas. So your foot's on the gas, you press in the clutch, you shift gears, you clutch out, and that whole time you've had that accelerator pressed down. Now, the problem with doing this is that because your foot's flooring it and you've pressed in that clutch, your engine speed's going to go very high, but then your transmission speed wants to go lower because you're shifting to a higher gear. And so what happens is when you then release that clutch pedal and you've kept your foot floored, you're sending a really high load through this clutch, the speeds don't match up, and you're smashing those things together at different speeds at a high torque. And so the transmission, of course, doesn't like that. The clutch doesn't like that. Not a great thing to do if you're trying not to abuse your clutch. Uh, however, there are some things that you can do to kind of change the way that interaction occurs uh, if you actually tune for doing it. So let's talk about what's going on with this engine during this very brief moment, just a fraction of a second that we're performing this no lift shift. So if we have a turbocharged engine, you don't wanna lose boost, right? You wanna maintain boost throughout the shift so that you don't have to restart that process of building turbocharger boost and rebuilding your engine's power. So how do we do this? Well, let's first just take a look at what's going on with our engine. And this is a simplified diagram so that we can understand what's going on. It's not an exact replica of what we have with the 3.6 liter in the CT4 V Blackwing. So we have our air intake up front, that air passes through the compressor side of our turbocharger, travels along, passes through an intercooler, goes through your throttle, then into your engine, comes out the exhaust, passes through the exhaust portion of the turbocharger, and then leaves out your exhaust. And so what do we want to happen during this shift? Well, while we've got our foot floored, we don't need power, right? We don't need, the power's not going anywhere. We don't need that power to slam that transmission right when we get back into gear. Uh, but we do wanna maintain boost. We don't have to wait for that boost to come back after we've shifted gears. So one of the clever things that you do is you want exhaust pressure, but not necessarily cylinder pressure. So how do you do that? Well, you retard your ignition timing. So you delay when you have your spark fire because instead of that piston being right at the top and then sparking and you have all that pressure turning into useful work pushing that piston down, instead you fire that spark plug later as that piston's already on its way down. So instead of that exhaust pressure becoming useful work, you just send that exhaust pressure right out the exhaust and it keeps your turbocharger spooled up so that you don't have a delay in getting boost again once you've completed the shift. Now, you also don't want to just go above red line, right? So in this process, you do have to cut fuel. So if you're just sitting there at the rev limit, you're cutting fuel as necessary to keep your engine at its peak RPM However, you're still retarding that ignition because when you are firing, you don't want to be making power, but you do want exhaust pressure. So essentially in this state, the engine isn't making much power, but it is maintaining boost. 
Now, to optimize this process, not only do we need to look at ignition timing, but we also need to look at our wastegate as well as our bypass valve. And so a wastegate is used to prevent overboost from your engine, creating too much boost, making too much power. And so basically what happens is you have exhaust, it's spinning this turbine, that's giving you boost, it's pulling in more and more air, and that means you have more exhaust, which spins this faster, which means you get more air, and that cycle just continues, right? So in order to prevent this, you have a wastegate which allows that air to bypass your turbocharger so that you don't create additional boost. Now on the Cadillac CT4V, this is actually uh, an internal wastegate, not an external like I have shown here, uh, but regardless that's just kind of a, a very simple difference in how you have that exhaust gases diverted. They're using a vacuum pump and vacuum storage in order to draw a vacuum within the wastegate itself. So the wastegate has a spring that's always trying to open up that valve. And so the valve wants to be open and then you use a vacuum and you pull a vacuum to squeeze that spring down and close off this valve. So let's talk about different scenarios and how you're using this wastegate. If you're on the highway, if you're idling, if you don't have much load, well, you're gonna open it up. So you're not gonna have much vacuum being pulled in this wastegate so that the exhaust can route around the turbocharger because in that scenario, if you're not making much power, this just acts like a restriction. So it's just gonna cause you to get worse efficiency, worse fuel economy. So if you can bypass it, do it uh, on scenarios where you don't need the power. Uh, if you're at full power, of course, you're gonna pull that vacuum, close this off. Uh, most of that exhaust is going to go through the turbocharger. And then once you reach your desired peak boost level, then you start easing this wastegate valve open and letting any excess that needs to go by go by so you just level off your boost at the exact pressure that you want. And then for a no lift shift, what are you doing? Well, you're actually fully closing this valve so that all of the exhaust gases are forced to go through the turbine. Because remember, we're having to cut fuel if you're sitting at that red line, if you're taking a really long time for this shift. And even if you're not, realistically, like say a shift takes a quarter of a second, you've still got a bunch of RPM that are gonna happen in just that quarter of a second. So what you're doing is you're fully closing this to ensure that while you're bouncing off that rev limiter, cutting fuel, the fuel that is used and the fuel that is used to keep that engine at redline all ends up going through the turbocharger and keeping that thing spooled up so that you still have boost with the engine. Finally, we get to bypass valve. So you can kind of think of a bypass valve like a wastegate, except it is on the intake side instead of on the exhaust side. So you have a valve that wants to be pushed closed by the spring, and then by regulating the pressure within this spring, you can open or close that valve. So why would you want to have this valve open? Well, let's talk about what's going on when you're at full power. So you've got your foot on the floor, you're trying to maximize power, you've got air coming in through your intake, your turbocharger is spooled up, it's trying to create boost, so you're adding a bunch of air within this intake tract right here, so all of this intake is filled with boost, and then you let off the throttle and you close that throttle valve. So now you have all this boost, all this air pressure rushing towards this throttle that's now closed. So where does that pressure go? Well, the only place for it to get back out is to go back through the turbocharger. This is called turbo surge. You don't want this to happen, so how do you avoid it? Well, you have a valve that sees, okay, there's a vacuum here, it opens this up, it allows that high pressure air to escape, uh, but basically what you're doing is you're bleeding off all of that boost. So in the scenario that you're lifting while you shift, so you press in the clutch, and while you're pressing in the clutch, you let off the throttle, well, during that scenario, you close the throttle, all of your boost is bled off from this bypass valve, so then when you get back on the throttle after completing the shift, you have to rebuild all of that boost within this whole intake tract before it goes into the engine. So you're taking time away from acceleration because you're not at full power immediately once you're back into gear. So with the no lift shift scenario, what Cadillac is doing in this scenario is when you leave your foot down, this means this throttle is always open, which means there's never a time that this bypass valve opens, which means you leave boost within the intake the whole duration of that shift. So once you then let off the clutch and you're in your next gear, well, you've already got boost built within your manifold and you're ready to go right back to full power immediately. Now, as an example, I have footage going from second to third to fourth and to fifth, all while never taking the foot off the accelerator pedal and shifting through on a 
a six-speed manual transmission. So you can see this green bar, and this green bar is showing you your throttle percentage. So it's maxed out the entire time going through these shifts. However, this is actually a Cadillac CT5 V Blackwing that we're looking at. So this is a supercharged V8, not a turbocharged engine. So turbocharged engines get a bit more benefit uh, from flat foot shifting because you're able to maintain that boost and not lose the boost through the shift. Uh, but it's neat to see this process uh, and see footage of it actually occurring. Overall, I just think it's pretty cool how much is involved with this. You know, the ignition timing, the wastegates, the bypass valves, all for simply just shifting gears without lifting your foot off of the throttle. So pretty cool. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.